There's a nuclear push on in Asia and Australia. This is Enviro Close Up. I am Carl Grossman. With me is Dr. M. V. Ramana. He's with the Security Studies Program at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And Dr. Tillman Ruff, he is a consultant with the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War. Dr. Ramana, what's going on in in your your homeland, India, Pakistan. I mean, in fact, there's a nuclear push in China, in Korea, all through Asia. What's happening? Right. Um, the you can divide the countries of Asia into sort of three camps. Um, one are the countries which have a large established nuclear power structure. These are countries like Japan, Taiwan, and South Korea. Um, these have typically about 30 percent of the electricity comes from nuclear power, and they're all pushing for much more. Um, except in Taiwan, where there's a huge amount of opposition from various nuclear, f from various political parties. Um, then there are countries like India and Pakistan, which have been uh, having some amount of nuclear infrastructure, uh, but they're not going that fast towards expansion, basically because they lack finances and because they lack international support, because they've not signed the NPT. And then there are countries like China, Indonesia, um, and Thailand, and so on, which have had no major nuclear infrastructure in the past, uh, especially in the nuclear power sector. And they're all in looking to increase tremendously. Dr. Ruffa, on a totally personal level, you're an expert in infectious diseases. Why this, this central focus in your, your life and career on nuclear technology? As the World Health Organization has said repeatedly, uh, this is the greatest threat to the health and survival of humankind that exists. And I think as a public health physician, it would be irresponsible not to, to work on that issue. I mean, you don't see nuclear technology as a peaceful atom kind of stuff? The peaceful atom has only been a, been a proposition at all, has only developed any kind of legs because it was very heavily subsidized and because it was related to weapons development. Without those two things, nuclear power would never have flown, would never have gotten off the ground. Is there a peaceful atom? There is in the sense that, that nuclear medicine is a very useful, can make a very useful contribution both to diagnosis and treatment of, uh, of sick people. Uh, but it's very constrained and it doesn't require either weapons or power generation. For people to get more information about the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, eh? a Nobel Prize winning organization based in Cambridge, in Cambridge Massachusetts. Uh, who can they call? Where can they write? Write to us at 126 Rogers Street, Cambridge, uh, MA 02142. Okay, and, and Dr. Romana, you're a physicist. Mm -hmm. uh, you sound like a very anti-nuclear physicist. <laughs> well, what, what, what's your personal, uh, well, commitment, interest in this issue? I started because they built a nuclear plant about 30 miles from my hometown. And some friends of mine did a survey near there. And they asked the you know, people who live around there, you know, do you know what's going on in there? You know, you know, if there's an accident, what would you do? And these guys didn't know anything. Um, they were never told that this is a dangerous thing. You know, they would continue to eat the vegetables, drink the water, walk around as normal. And this is what really started my concern, that nuclear power is so secretive um, that it needs to people need to know about it, and that's where I see my technical skills come into play. Thank you so much. Thank you for your work. Thank you for watching Enviro Close-Up.